So it's half past 10. So it's my pleasure to introduce our first invited speaker, who is uh, Katarina Zip. Uh, Dr. Katarina Zip is a lecturer at the University of Kassel at the Department of Fire Animal Behavior and Husbandry in Germany. And her research concerns the important, really important topics in dairy industry, uh, which is uh, the calf-cow relationship. And one of the topic that Katarina is studying is how to improve the milk letdown of cows that are nursing their own calf. So I am very happy to invite her to give us her talk about natural behavior of cattle and cow-calf conduct in dairy farming. So Katarina, the floor is yours. Thanks a lot, Radka, for the nice introduction and for the invitation as a plenary speaker. So yeah, the um, title was already mentioned, so I will directly start. <clears throat> In uh, common ag agricultural practice, dairy cows are usually separated from their calf within a few hours after birth. If calving uh, took place in a calving pen, cows are reintroduced into the milking herd after separation from the calf. Calves are initially housed individually in most cases, or especially at later times, they are housed in groups of calves of approximately the same age. They are fed with milk or milk replacer mostly by teat buckets or automatic milk feeders. Um, this practice has been uh, criticized by different parties and reasons were that it's negative uh, for animal uh, welfare and that it's uh, lacking naturalness. And in um, different European countries, there's an increasing interest in cow-calf contact systems. And there's a lot of research, not only in uh, Europe, but also in other countries, for example, uh, Canada. And uh, there's no real systematic assessment of the number of farms with uh, cow-calf contact systems. I will uh, call this cow-calf contact systems uh, now uh, three C systems, and um, but we know that at least 150 farms with uh, three C systems are in Germany, Switzerland, and Austria. But I think uh, there might be even more. <clears throat> Over the last three years, there were two core organic projects which had cow calf contact systems as one topic of research. The Pro Young, Young Stock project, which um, where two of my colleagues were involved, and the Grazy Daisy project. And they uh, also had surveys with uh, 3C farmers. And um, yeah, my colleagues asked them, for example, what was your motivation to do? Uh, these systems and the uh, first motivation uh, was that it's more natural but the uh, second was that calves are healthier in those systems and even uh, though also in the grazy daisy systems many farmers stated this uh, scientific results on this topic are heterogeneous and overall effects seem to be small in research but if we talk about 3C systems, first we need to define them. So we can distinguish them according to the duration of daily contact. There is whole day and half day contact. Often calves uh, have access to the cow barn during this time. Half day uh, contact can be either day during daytime or during nighttime. And another version is the short time contact where the cows have uh, often uh, before or after milking contact to their calf, for example, twice per day for 60 minutes. Also the type of contact can be distinguished. Often full, day, uh, full contact is uh, provided where nursing is included 
but um, sometimes only partial contact without nursing is allowed. And then the question arises to what uh, adult animal has the calf contact? So to the own mother, which is called dam, or to a foster cow, which uh, also may suckle her own calf, but also uh, one to uh, three alien calves. Uh, and uh, there are also combined systems where, for example, during the colostrum period, the own dam is uh, suckled and afterwards for some weeks, a foster cow or, uh, yeah, there are different um, possibilities when the switch between dam and foster cow occurs. And also the question is, uh, is the suckled cow milked or not? And there are diff different versions of this. And uh, because there are so many different combinations, I will show you now the results of the Pro Young Stock project, uh, how these 21 um, farmers uh, conduct their systems. So there were uh, four um, systems where the calves only had contact to the dam, 14 combined systems with dam and foster cow, and three systems where calves had only contact to a foster cow. Foster cows are, for example, um, cows of a dairy herd with uh, other which is not so good for milking or with high somatic cell count and they are housed often individually with the or not individually in a separate pen or on pasture with uh, the calves so and often they are not milked. Okay here the uh, yellow ones uh, this is the, the diet so the cow with their own calf and the blue ones are the foster mothers which may have their own calf uh, but sometimes uh, only alien calves. So, and um, often these combined uh, systems are really diverse. So some have twice a day milking uh, for the cow, some do not milk the cow and some partly milk the cow. So for example, during the first time there's no milking and later there's milking or the other way around. And only um, the foster cow systems where the cows had, calves had only contact with the foster cow, often there is no milking, as I already told you, they are in a separate pen or on pasture together with the cows. And the other uh, her cows of the dairy herd are milked. And uh, the dam systems often have a combination of nursing and milking. So now I want to talk about the contact duration over the day. Um, here, these foster care systems are whole day systems and the others, uh, all possibilities uh, occur. So we have here, for example, only with them contact one farm, which has short time contact, one with half day contact and two with whole day contact and also for them and foster combination all um, durations are possible. And for the short uh, time contact, uh, the, um, the time of the two meetings varies between 20 minutes twice daily and three hours twice daily. Further um, short time contact before milking has shown to be less problematic and therefore it's more com common. Yeah, um, even so, though uh, these three uh, C systems are more natural, there are some uh, welfare challenges in housing and management and uh, the solutions may be found in uh, natural behavior and therefore I uh, want to um, compare now uh, or 
presents uh, some important topics of natural behavior of cattle and um, tell you how uh, is, it is, um, yeah, uh, solu what solutions might be in, in uh, or what problems may occur in 3C systems. And uh, yeah, information about natural behavior is often um, assessed under semi-natural conditions, so either extensive beef suckler systems or no, uh, not commercially used cattle. And I want to talk about a period from birth of the calf to birth of the next calf. So we start with the birth. Um, Cattle are mainly categorized as hiders, even though it depends on some animal and housing factors. If the cow behaves like a hider, uh, typically, typically upon parturition, the cow leaves the herd. After parturition, the calf stays hidden while the mother forages nearby or joins the herd again. The dam rejoins the, the herd with the calf one to three weeks after parturition. And therefore it is recommended to uh, allow uh, calving in a calving box and that um, the calf stays in the box and the cow stays in the, in the box for, um, yeah, for example, five days that a strong bonding can be established and the cow leaves the box for milking and sometimes for the main feeding time. The innate uh, teeth seeking is directed towards an angle. And as you can see in the picture, calves mostly surge between the forelegs or the hind legs, where most of the dots are. And um, therefore, large udders or uh, udders with low hanging teats may be challenged for calves. And as a consequence, Proper suckling should be checked and assisted, assisted if necessary, and colostrum may also be fed by bottle to ensure a healthy start of life. Soon before or after parturition, there is a sensitive period of the cow. Cervical stimulation by the expulsion of the fetus stimulates maternal behavior and the licking of amniotic fluid. Licking and low pitched vocalization is a common maternal behavior and uh, soon after birth maternal selectivity is established. On the other hand, if calves can, even if calves can distinguish her mother from other cows and they have a preference for her, it is not unusual that they suckle alien cows if they have the possibility. So, if we talk about foster cows and we want to establish a bonding between the foster cow and the alien calf, what can we do? So on one hand, it is very important to foster the alien calf soon before or after calving of the foster cow and that the calf is as young as possible. Further, uh, odor, odor can be transferred from the own calf, either by smearing the alien calf with amniotic fluid of the foster cow or transferring body odor of the own calf to an alien calf by a cloth, which was worn for two to four days by the own calf. And in uh, practice or on farm, the uh, farmers sometimes select the foster cows due to their social positive behavior towards alien calves. Yeah, but even if there is a bonding especially uh, established between a foster cow and an alien calf, uh, the need of the real mother to uh, um, perform maternal behavior um, yeah, is ignored in this case. So what are signs of a bonding? It is uh, nursing in inverse parallel, 
parallel position, which is just shown here. Affiliative behavior, maintaining proximity, uh, separation, distress, and after they uh, are the diet is reunited, um, that this distress is reduced. Um, in foster care systems where no bonding established, sometimes uh, tolerance or acceptance is um, established. Um, this is shown by nursing in another position, like here from the rare. And uh, cows may show at, uh, agitative or agonistic behavior during suckling attempts of a non-bonded calf. And therefore, often the alien calf suckles uh, when the own calf is suckling, because then the uh, cow is standing still. Uh, there is no affiliative behavior and no uh, separation distress, but um, yeah, there's, yes, yeah, it's not so very clear. You cannot say it's black and white. For example, Loberberg showed in her um, PhD, she had foster cows with four alien calves and uh, those ca cows favored one to uh, two calves. But during the weeks of observation, this um, it could vary which calf was preferred. And some, some cows only preferred always the same calves and uh, some uh, yeah, varied. So there is uh, still a lack of knowledge. Okay. Um, in whole and half day contact, uh, calves are integrated in the calf barn, or in a cow barn. And uh, in natural behavior uh, would be that uh, the calves spend a lot of time in the so-called kindergarten. Cow, cows spend most of the time grazing with other cows and the calf is resting or playing with the youngest non-grazing calves of the herd in the so-called kindergarten supervised by a cow or the bull. And the dam and the calf meet for suckling and affiliative behavior. Later, they graze together. And um, yeah, it is important to have a calf creep um, if the cow, calves are integrated into the cow barn, that they have their own um, place where they find uh, water and feed in the correct height, and uh, yeah, that they seclude themselves from time to time. <clears throat> yeah, here you can see another version of a calf creep, and uh, on this picture. Um, the calf and the cow barn are next to each other and there is a transponder controlled selection gate so that the younger may enter the cow barn. A lot of studies observed how often calves suckle per day. Um, so it ranges between three to nine times for 24 hours and uh, it is decreasing with age. They suckle during the daytime and during the nighttime. You can see this in uh, this uh, figure. Here we have the time of day starting at 12 o'clock in the night. And uh, here the percent of sucklings, these uh, calves were 53 days old. So um, if we uh, compare the three uh, C systems, Whole day contact has no limitations according to suckling, but a half day and short time contact is less natural because uh, yeah, they are not the whole time together and cannot suckle um, whenever they want. But if we look at the number of sucklings and the weight gain, um, it is not associated. This is from, um, yeah, extensive beef uh, sucklers. And uh, if we compare the different 3C systems, uh, here you see on the y-axis the weight gain of calves. And this was a nine-week nursing P 
period. This is the control which uh, had um, try three kilograms of whole milk. Here in green, the half day contact uh, during daytime and whole day contact. And you can see on one hand, them rearing is, um, yeah, they gain more weight, weight than the control. But on the other hand, there is no difference in weight gain between half day and whole day contact. And if we look at this box plot, uh, it's from twice a day, 24, uh, 45 to 60 minutes contact per, per day. So short time contact and the weight gain is also comparable to half day and whole day contact. Now you may say, say twice 60 minutes of contact. It's really long short time contact, but in the study of Roth and colleagues, they had only twice a day, 50 minutes of contact a day. And this is in, in gray and in white, you see whole day contact. And also there is no difference um, between the uh, treatments and also not compared to the box plot before. <clears throat> However, the uh, mother is not only a source of milk, but a social partner of highest attractiveness. Vast and colleagues summarized that beside nutrition, care and learning are important qualities the animals may experience. So um, they uh, also perform affiliative behavior and protection, which may be both part of care. <clears throat> if we talk about protection, after the phase in the calving box, in half day and whole day contact, the cow and the calf are integrated into the dairy herd. And at this time, uh, most of other cows want to sniff the new calf. And the mother stands beside and watches, and sometimes agonistic interactions appear. So it, that's not from research, but my observation. Then uh, um, there's a lot of watching and sniffing and so on. Um, further, there is close proximity during lying and grazing. And this is uh, grazing is often during the day, but also there's a uh, small uh, period during the night and there's also social play. <clears throat> in uh, research, um, even in partial contact, so without nursing, lying in proximity and allo grooming has been observed. So there is still a bonding if, even if there is no nursing. Um, uh, this was with uh, other net and this was with fence line weaning and it has been shown that fence line reduces uh, the behavior but this might be due to the barrier there are indications that there are less interactions during the night so half day contact during the night might be less um, good for uh, learning than during the day and uh, less behavior is possible with decreasing contact duration. On the other hand, human calf contact is easier if the contact in the calf, uh, in the cow barn is reduced. And uh, there's um, not that much research on the impact of different 3C systems on learned abilities. However, I will show the results which we already know. So <clears throat> there are some indications that um, cow-calf contact uh, has a positive influence on social behavior. It is reported that dam reared calves and heifers show submissive behavior in conflicting situations so that they possibly recognize a threat and know how to adequately react in this situation. On the other hand, they are in some situations more assertive and overall um, accepted in the dairy herd at an earlier stage. And farmers report that 
they have the impression that the herd is yeah, getting calmer. <clears throat> there are a few indications that the integration into the milking herd is easier for them or uh, cow reared calves, uh, which has been shown, for example, by less calling or uh, that first lactating cows which were housed with the milking cows for their first nine weeks of life had longer lying durations on their second day after integration into the milking herd. This may reflect um, on one hand social abilities, but it could also be um, a result of that uh, the the animals already know the barn or some conspecifics. If farmers were asked, what do you think calves learn in 3C systems? Uh, they, for example, stated they learn feeding, rough, feeding roughage, grazing, walking to pasture. They learn how the, the sounds in the cow barn and accept the fences and the daily rhythm in the dairy herd. Um, now I want to talk about animal-human relationship. Normal behavior would be uh, to avoid um, the human however we want a good human-animal or animal-human relationship because uh, it's better for animal welfare and easier for handling, safer for the people. Uh, however, it is... Uh, reported on that it, uh, from research and also from uh, on-farm research that um, calves from 3C three, three systems can be wild because they have less human interactions. Um, it has been shown from uh, whole day dam contact that gentle feeding and assistance during the first five days may um, decrease the avoidance distance. So here, five days of contact and the avoidance distance of the calf was uh, lower than the non-handled cal calves. On the other hand, this difference um, between the control group, the artificially reared group and the dam contact group which was pronounced when they were a calf, uh, vanished over time. So these are the results as a heifer and here as a cow. <clears throat> now let's talk about separation and weaning. Um, the in natural behavior would be that cows uh, wean their calves at about 80% of their next pregnancy. Calves are normally 7 to 12 months. At this time, <clears throat> the weaning is gradual and there is no separation. There are behavioral changes uh, has been shown between the 28th and 49th week of life of the calves. And there was an increase of agitation, threatening and leaving the calf during suckling attempts. But the bond between cow and calf still persists, uh, shown by affiliative behavior and proximity. Yeah, the farmers um, reported that they separate the cow and the calf between the fourth and 31st week of life. Um, I mean, there are farmers which separate them earlier, but then it's uh, kind of definition was what is a three system or not. And um, it is recommended to have separation and weaning in two steps. There are different possibilities like nose flaps, fence line, decreasing contact duration and separation with additional milk feeding. And I will come to the results of this soon. And normally there is no contact between cow and calf until the integration into the dairy herd. There are some indications that some heifers or first lactating cows recognize their mothers after this long separation. And um, 
yeah, if the cat mothers are still in the dairy herd. On the next slide, I want to show why separation and weaning are challenging. <clears throat> so this was um, a study where one day whole day dam contact was compared with two weeks of whole day dam uh, contact and they were separated without visual contact. So here are the results of distress of the cows. Here we have the time after separation. So separation was at zero and uh, it was up to 24 hours and the different behavioral um, responses. So standing, moving, uh, head out of the pan and calling. And you can see that after uh, 16 hours, the uh, calling was increased and head out of the pen was increased uh, and moves um, immediately after separation. If we look at the calves, um, here you can also see increased uh, head out of the pen after was not 16, it was 18, sorry. Uh, hours um, moving and um, more standing directly uh, and head out the pen and moves after the separation. <clears throat> and Johnson uh, and colleagues found increased vocalization up to 72 hours post separation. Um, <clears throat> You can see here data of a study of Fröberg and colleagues. On the y-axis, the average daily weight gain of calves can be shown and uh, the x-axis different phases of life. The th uh, colors are different treatments. So five kilogram milk replacer, red is eight kilogram milk replacer and blue whole day dam contact. And during the first, uh, or oh, during the first phase where there is um, contact and um, milk available, we have an increasing weight gain in all treatments and the weight gain of Dembriot calves is um, yeah, nearly the double of uh, the artificially reared calves, but then we have this abrupt uh, weaning. And as calves, uh, Dembriot calves can drink up to 15, 15 Kilograms per day, this abrupt weaning is really uh, hard. They rely on the milk and uh, are not so used to solid feed. And therefore there's a uh, growth check and uh, suffering if we have this abrupt weaning. So um, now I want to talk about different uh, possibilities of separation and weaning. Uh, on one hand, um, visual contact has been shown to be worse than a complete separation. Um, there was, um, or there were no differences in calves, but cows were um, more agitated and showed more vocalization. And this uh, studies with fence lines, or so where they have a contact through a fence, physical contact, or over a gate. And um, this has been shown to be um, good for the calves. So less agitation and less vocalization, for example, compared to complete separation or complete to auditory separation or only auditory contact with a solid uh, wall between. And, uh, but there was no uh, difference uh, or it was not assessed what was with the cows. But during uh, fence line weaning, you can also have additional milk feeding and a gradual weaning, which is recommended. Here you can see uh, data of this gradual uh, weaning. So these were, you already know this, nine weeks of a half day or whole day contact. And here um, the work uh, separated to visual contact. So here's the calf and here's the uh, outdoor run of the cows. And um, they hear bucket feeding started. And you can see at first there is a little 
uh, growth check, but not that big as in the study of Rüberg. They uh, need to learn to drink from the bucket, and that's why um, there is a little growth check during the first week, but then um, it's getting better, and there were no uh, significant differences afterwards any longer. <clears throat> Another possibility is to use a nose flap, which is an anti-suckling device, which is fixed in the nose of the cow. You can see in the picture. And um, compared to abrupt separation without any contact, um, it reduces the stress response, stress response of calves and cows. And in a recent study, um, nose flap weaning was compared with gradu gradual reduction of nursing time. And the outcome was that even though the calves which were allowed to suckle their dam from time to time had higher weight gains, they vocalized uh, more. So therefore, um, we need to reconsider the interpretation of vocalization as often it was interpreted as a sign of hunger in calves. And we need to think about further methods to estimate separation and weaning distress. By the way, the gradual reduction of contact duration is often used on farm and good results has been reported, but there is a lack of research, uh, scientific research in this field. The nose uh, flaps uh, were used or are used in uh, on farm. However, only 14 to 15 percent of calves are properly weaned with nose flaps um, because they're sometimes they lose the nose flaps or they uh, drink even though they have the nose flaps from the other. And also lesions can occur in the nose region. <clears throat> and no addition, additional milk feeding is possible. Another possibility is to use an udder net, which is a kind of a bra for our cows, which prevents suckle, suckling. This has been used in a few studies, but is less common uh, in, on, on farm. So I want to come to my conclusions and further considerations. Studies which compare different 3C systems, um, yeah, has been shown that the more contact is um, given, the more natural behavior can be conducted. Um, the influence of learned abilities is largely unknown, and we need uh, yeah research where the three system the systems are compared in one study, for example, according to feeding behavior, avoidance distance and social behavior. Um, yeah, uh, we do not know the impact of bonding on the welfare of calves, so is it, or not only of calves, so they experience less uh, affiliative behavior, for example, if they are not bonded to the cow. And on the other hand, uh, the non-bonded uh, cow needs to accept the suckling of alien calves and they sometimes um, yeah, seem not to be amused by this or they only allow it if they uh, are suckling their own um, Calf, so is this a welfare problem or not? And there may be an impact of the three C systems on welfare of first lactating cows. I talked about the situation where the cow protects her new calf. This may be a stressful, a stressful situation for a first lactating cow, which is normally low in rank. But on the other hand, the calf may give some kind of social support to the mother. <clears throat> and further, first lactating cows need to get used to milking, which might be more stressful when she's additionally nursing her calf. So there is also nothing known about this. <clears throat> yeah, uh, talking about separation and weaning, um, distress is, yeah, 
always predicted to be increased if the contact is prolonged and it's um, recommended to have these two steps between separation and weaning and to have gradual methods. <clears throat> the methods uh, like, um, for example, fence line weaning has been shown to be uh, positive for the calf, but not for the cow. So there is more research needed for, uh, where both uh, parties are involved. And um, yeah, we need to talk about indicators of distress. I already talked about this vocalization, but uh, what is about this? Um, yeah, sometimes it is um, con considered or uh, that after birth, um, given birth, cows might have a depressive-like state uh, when they are separated from the calf and that they are not vocalizing, but they might be yeah, kind of depressive. And um, how can we estimate if this is the case or not. So that's why here is this question mark. So is there really in decreased stress or is it different stress? Okay, <laughs> thank you for your attention and I'm really looking forward to the discussion. <laughs>